This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for being here with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is six o'clock and this morning it almost looks like normal, right? We're seeing people flock to Portland restaurants as COVID restrictions lower in Multnomah County. Plus a serious staffing shortage has Oregon State Psychiatric Hospital calling in the National Guard for help. But first, our Chris McGinnis joins us live at home with our forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning and happy Saturday to you, Galen, and to everyone at home for joining us. We have got a stellar Memorial Day weekend forecast coming our way. Starting with this, let's take you live right now to the Stoller Vineyard camera down in Dayton. And you can see a beautiful silhouette here of Mount Hood sunrise uh, oh, about 30 minutes ago. And you can see just a little haze in the foreground. Otherwise, uh, a mostly clear sky atop the region. And that will stay with us uh, all day long. Live to Newport, at the top of the Aquita Bay Bridge being illuminated now with the sun coming up over the coast range. You do see some uh, low clouds and fog just offshore. Right now it's 50 degrees. Last check at PDX Hillsborough and King City, some of the cooler spots in the immediate metro area in the lower 40s. As we hop over to the eastern part of the state, Baker City waking up to 32. You've got plenty of sunshine in your forecast. Don't worry, you'll warm up nicely as we will here in the valley today. Gail and our forecast high this afternoon, 83 here in Portland and it gets warmer from there as we get deeper into the weekend. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Big temperature change. Chris, thank you so much. Well, many are heading into this holiday weekend feeling a lot closer to normal than they have for an entire year. Last night was the first Friday with lower COVID restrictions in Multnomah County. Our Mike Benner shows many neighborhoods are coming back to life. Friday evening's visit to the Pearl for these two gals is long overdue. Julie on the left is from California and visiting Angela on the right. The first big trip in some time. We're going to start off there, yeah, and I think we're just going to mosey around, walk through some shops. Kids are at home. Does it get any better? Yes, in fact, it does. The sun is shining and the COVID restrictions are loosening. The perfect recipe for a great night. It feels like a relief, like huge relief. Like this last year has just been like... Horrible, crappy, sucky, all the things. So it just feels good. It doesn't feel normal yet, but it feels like we're getting there. It feels amazing. It's like the perfect weather. I love seeing all the people out. I love all the little shops we can go in. Yeah, it feels good. And speaking of shops, with Multnomah County having just moved into the state's lower risk level, retail stores jumped to 75% capacity. Restaurants are now sitting at 50%. It explains why the Pearl was buzzing on this sunny Friday night of Memorial Day weekend. It almost feels like no one, you know, nothing's ever happened in a sense. Everyone's actually enjoying themselves. Like, so it's, it's cool, it, you know, after a year of nothing. So this is great. Across town in South Portland, hundreds flooded Zydell Yards for some live music and a showing of the classic movie E.T. Moviegoers will be relaxing in pods of either two, four, or six seats. They say this is the perfect scenario as we emerge from the pandemic. The fences and the chairs are good because it will prevent people from like roaming around for like COVID restrictions and all that. So it, I feel like it's going to be pretty safe. I'm excited to hear the music and see the movie. Awesome. And how does it feel just to be out doing something? Very exciting. That's the consensus from South Portland to the Pearl District. The first stop of what's sure to be a memorable weekend for some lifelong friends. We're going to go wine tasting later this weekend. We got plans. In Portland, Mike Benner for KGW News. Now, if you are traveling this weekend, tighter restrictions do still apply in other areas. 15 Oregon counties remain in the high risk status. That's all the counties in orange on this map here. Now, those include Clackamas, Marion, Columbia, Polk, and Yamhill counties. Part of central Oregon is seeing its highest number of COVID hospitalizations so far this pandemic. As of Thursday, St. Charles Hospital in Bend had at least 41 COVID patients. Now, that may not seem like too many, but that's more than OHSU here in Portland, which serves a much larger population. With so many COVID patients needing special care there, there are treatment delays for other patients in the hospital. When you come into the emergency room, have to be transferred to other hospitals in the region. Right now, we don't, we don't have a place to put you. It affects everyone. I mean, people who need care are getting delayed care. People who need to be seen in the emergency department are sometimes having to wait six hours to be seen. Since March 1st, St. Charles Hospital has had about 500 COVID patients in the ER. Officials say 98% of those patients were not vaccinated or not fully vaccinated. 
Oregon's main psychiatric hospital rather faces a big staffing shortage. The Oregon State Hospital in Salem is a secure facility that cares for about 600 people with serious mental health issues. But staff members have been taking a large amount of time off as COVID leave. The hospital is asking now the National Guard to send in nurses and requesting staff at other public agencies to help. So we have had a lot of staff um, using COVID related leave, either it's because they're sick or because they have to take care of a family member or they, their child care has been impacted by the pandemic. So we have a lot of people out and we have patients to take care of seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The National Guard said it's aware of the request, but has not made any commitments yet. Meanwhile, to keep units covered, the hospital has forced some employees to stay on into the next shift. It's also rotating managers and supervisors on weekends and is hiring nurses. It's as, as fast as it can. To Portland's homeless crisis now and to some solutions as well here. Last May, voters approved the, high, uh, the Here Together Supportive Services bond measure. Money from that now starts coming in on July 1st. Now we're getting an idea of how Multnomah County will use that money to start. County Chair Deborah Cavori says they'll find space in housing units that are already built and add wraparound services for people who are considered chronically homeless. The money that we are going to raise um, from this measure will go in this next year alone to house as many as 1,300 households. So 1,300 people and their partners potentially will be off the streets, out of shelters, and into permanent housing. The measure is expected to bring in a billion dollars over the next 10 years. We've got a lot more detailed uh, look at those plans at the county's plan, rather, along with new plans from Portland to address homelessness on KGW.com. A Portland dairy facility and ball field could be turned into a big housing development, and neighbors say it would be a huge loss for more than just them. Even in a downpour, Deborah Harrison walks her dog around the grounds of Alpen Rose Dairy in southwest Portland. This is where I get my strongest sense of community is right here. She's disappointed to hear two companies have submitted a plan to redevelop the dairy, ball field and velodrome into a subdivision of 193 homes. It feels really tragic for this this area because it is such a, a center for community and people just come and see each other. You see your neighbors every day. It's tough. Yeah, it really is. Mike Workman volunteered at the ball field and Alpen Rose facilities for 25 years, inspired by his work as an umpire for youth teams in the softball World Series held at the stadium. He and his wife also helped decorate for big community and holiday events. It's just a sad time. It really is. Yeah, and, and I don't think anything can be done to resurrect it. I don't think historical factors will come into play. That history is complicated. Alpen Rose Dairy sold the business to Smith Brothers Farms in 2019, which operates the dairy now. But former owners of the dairy, descendants of Florian Cadeneau, retain rights to the land and facilities. That means if this housing development plan goes through, the dairy business would have to move. What makes Alpen Rose special to the community? A lot of people would tell you that three generations of their families have gone to the dairy. KGW reached out to Lennar Northwest and Westlake Consultants, the companies behind the plans, but did not hear back for an interview. The plans are tentative. They could change or not happen at all. But neighbors like Deborah Harrison hope history plays a part in what happens next. If it could be developed, bought and developed as a park, I think that would be a huge boon to everyone in this area. We have more info on KGW.com about that one as well. And we know people in the Northwest love riding their bikes, but getting a new one these days can be really tough. What's causing that shortage, making people wait weeks for a new bike?